Go over to 2 Corinthians with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. I want you to notice what the Apostle Paul, when he signed off here to this Corinthians, to the Corinthian church, what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 14. He said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Notice that again. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now, I believe all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. I don't believe that these verses are just randomly put on paper. But I believe that they're there for our benefit. They're there for our admonition. And they're there because we need them. It'll help us to live a Christian life. And so if we're going to talk about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, what will we say about him? Well, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he talked about the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But then he talked about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Did you know God wants each one of us to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit every day of our life? Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesdays, not just while we're having a devotion. But God wants us to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, our communion with the Holy Spirit every day of our life. Can I tell you what makes this dispensation that we're living in unique is that the veil of the temple has been torn. It was torn from the top down to the bottom. You remember when Jesus was crucified all the prophecies that were fulfilled on the day of his crucifixion. And we know that the veil of the temple was torn. And it's a picture of from that point on, not only do we have free access to God, but God has free access to us. And so we have that assurance that we have fellowship with God. Now, fellowship with the Lord is better than fellowshipping with a superstar. How many believe that? Fellowship with the Lord is better than shaking the hands of your star athlete. Fellowship with the Lord is better than getting to be able to entertain anybody in this world. Fellowship with God is what you were created for. That was why I was put on this earth, that I could have fellowship with God. Now, in the Old Testament, you have the story of Moses. The Bible talks about how Moses was a friend of God. You read about Abram, Abram and Abraham, how he was a friend of God. And Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, because a servant doesn't know his master's will, but from now on I call you friends. And so we have a friendship with the Lord, we have a fellowship with the Lord. And I'd put it this way, he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother, the Bible says. And really, he wants to be your closest friend, your closest confidant, your closest companion. Now, I'm going to tell you what is the benefit of you going through a tough time in your life. I know you say, Pastor, are there any, is there an upside to me having a down time in my life? Is there a benefit in, in this detrimental time in my life? And the answer is yes. Because, see, whenever you have times when your heart has been broken... When hearts are broken, hearts are many times the most open to God. So whenever you've gone through a really difficult season or you've gone through a time of brokenness in your life, really, that's also a time that you're most vulnerable, you're more, most open, and you hear from the Lord more. So a lot of times people say, during that tough time in my life, I heard the Lord say this to me, or I felt like the Lord gave me this scripture to stand on. And as one man put it, I went through a difficult time and that scripture that I had on my wall 
That scripture didn't, wasn't just a plaque on the wall. It became my life preserver. And that was the thing that I held on to during the storm that I faced. So this morning, I just felt prompted. I need to talk to you a little bit about fellowshipping with the Lord, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Now, I think most of you would agree. There's a lot of people that have a relationship with God, but they really don't have much of a fellowship with God. In other words, if you talk to a lot of people and say, are you born again? Oh, absolutely, I'm born again. Do you go to church? Oh, I'm in church every Sunday. But when you dig down deeper, you really realize that for them, it's kind of this real in-a-box experience to where it's not like this real free-flowing relationship with the Lord. And now here's what happens. When you meet people that are open it'll put a hunger in your heart for you to become more open. For example, when you meet people that have a real open, transparent, intimate relationship with the Lord, it'll put a hunger in your heart to say, I want to know God that way. I don't like this dry, crusty, doctrinal-based Religion only. We believe in doctrine. You need to have sound doctrine. But what I'm saying is you want it to be more than just something in writing, but you want that writing to be in your heart, and you want it to be living and vibrant and healthy. So you want to be able to have a a growing, healthy relationship with the Lord, that you're in constant fellowship with the Lord. Now, that's what makes living for the Lord exciting is whenever you feel like not only are you talking to God, but you feel like he talked to me, whether it's through his word or by an impression by the Holy Spirit. You know, several years ago, we had Brandon Brim come here, and he spoke, and we got, went out to lunch one day, and we went out to lunch, and after we went out to lunch, he walked in the parking lot. He says, you see that car over there? I go, yeah. He goes, you know, I bought that car while I was up visiting my sister and my family up in Missouri. And he said, you know, the funny thing was whenever I purchased the plane ticket to come to, uh, he came and ministered here, but he had other speaking engagements. He said, when I came out and flew into the Branson area, he said, I, right when I started to buy the ticket, I heard the Lord put in my heart several times, just buy a one-way ticket just buy a one-way ticket and he thought well that's kind of odd a one-way ticket because you know it's be more expensive more expensive to do that it'd be cheaper to buy a round trip ticket but he said every time I try to buy that ticket it was just like the Lord put it in my heart just buy a one-way ticket and so he said okay I'm just going to go ahead and obey you Lord and I'll buy that one-way ticket so he tells how he and his wife bought the one-way ticket and they flew out and of course all the family wanted to know when are you going back he goes I don't know yet But I just felt kind of held in my spirit about buying a round trip ticket. And and so he said, while I'm there, he said, my sister went out and bought a new car. And he said she bought a new car and she was talking about how nice her car was and she was excited about her car. And then he said, I started asking her questions and and I said, oh, that's really nice. I said, well, how much did they give you for the trade-in? And she said, first of all, you know, sister's. She goes, none of your business. And then he goes, well, I'm not, I'm just curious. You know, I'm just curious. She goes, well, that was the only part of the deal I didn't like in that they didn't give me a very good price on the trade-in. I didn't like that part of it. But they did give me 24 hours that if I wanted to change my mind, I could change my mind and go back and buy it back from the dealership. He goes, well, I'd be willing to give you that price for the car. And she said, well, I'd rather you have it than the dealership. Mm -hmm. And so she said how she went, and he went rather and went down, and they redeemed that car back, right? And he said, man, I'm driving driving back to California in a car that's like 13 years newer than my car. (laughs) And, you know, he, he said, isn't that wild that God had this all planned out that all you need is a one-way ticket because I'm trying to bless you. I got something. If you'll just go ahead and obey me and trust me, I got something planned here. I've got something worked out for you, and I'm trying to bless you. Now, sometimes when God is trying to guide us, we misunderstand his guidance 
as something he's trying to confine us. Did you know God's commandments aren't given to us to confine us? He's trying to protect us. If God says no, it's because he knows what is best. It's because he's trying to protect us in our life. But you see, in order to have fellowship with the Lord, you're going to have to be open. And you're going to have to just spend time and and fellowship with Him and talk with Him. And you can't compartmentalize, well, I did my church thing Sunday morning. Now the whole rest of the week I'll do my thing and then I'll come back around on Sunday morning and do God's thing. No, God wants us to have fellowship with Him the same as as if Jesus were on the earth right now. And that he's with us. Lo, I am with you always, Jesus said. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen. Y'all, this is what separates religious people from people that just have a healthy relationship with God. Okay, do you realize people are not drawn to dead religion, but they are drawn to people that have a healthy relationship with God. So today, I just want to encourage you to cultivate the relationship with God. Cultivate your fellowship with the Lord. Like I say, there are many people that they have a relationship with the Lord, but they really don't have those times of great fellowship with the Lord. So my story is this. Sometime back, you know, the Lord put it in my heart, you need to spend more time in the Word. And I was reading about Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel and how God gave them ten times the wisdom of their counterparts. And I prayed and I said, Lord, that's what I want. I want ten times the anointing that I've ever had on my life. And as soon as I said that, I felt like the Lord put it back in my heart. Are you willing to spend ten times, ten times the amount of study in my word as you've been spending? Of course, I'm thinking... Okay, I thought, well, I don't know if I can do 10, but I can do three times. (laughs) Meaning, you know, I don't know how to multiply my time like that. But I was like, no, but I can triple it. I can spend it. And so, you know, over the past, really over the past two years, there's been this call I sense in my life to spend more time studying, more time with the Lord. And so what happens is sometimes something is birthed by a commandment of the Lord, but if we're not careful, we can make it a burden to us. You know, people can start with good intentions, but it becomes a, a burden and something that presses them down. And so I was praying one morning and I thought, oh, I got to get up because I need to study. I need to spend time and, and I need to really give myself to this. And right when I started to get up, I heard the Lord say, enjoy me. Now, you heard me tell you that. I heard the Lord say, enjoy me. And I knew what the Lord was saying. Tom, more than anything else that I'm asking you to do today, yes, you'll study. Yes, you'll spend time in the Word of God. But you're not spending time in the Word of God just for theological knowledge You're spending time in the Word of God. Hear this. Because we want to fellowship with the Lord. We want to enjoy God. Now, you know, you would ask some people, and if they were really honest with you, you'd say, are you saved? Oh, I'm saved. I am saved. And if you ask them the next question, do you enjoy God? They'd look at you like, they'd think you were blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You mean you're supposed to enjoy God? You mean we're supposed to enjoy? Y'all, let me tell you. We should not only serve the Savior, we should enjoy the Savior. And the Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you love somebody, that means enjoy them. Enjoy God. So I just want to kind of whet your appetite today to stir you up in this area of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, in order to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, a couple of things have got to take place. Number one, you've got to live with an awareness that God is with you 
every minute of your life. So we understand sometimes people sing songs and their songs are coming from their heart, their soul. And they can talk about, Lord, I'm desperate without you. I'm desperate without you. How many know really I'm not without God? We understand that sometimes people are approaching these things, and sometimes people will even go to the Psalms, which I love the Psalms. I'm reading through the Psalms right now. But people can read from an old covenant man, David, who didn't have the reality of the new creation. He didn't understand. He wasn't born again. These Old Testament saints weren't. They loved God. They had a passion for the Lord, but they didn't have the recreated human spirit. And so a lot of what they're doing, they're trying to get closer to the Lord, but they don't have a relationship that we have with God. In other words, the veil of the temple wasn't torn in their day. And they didn't have that open and freedom of access where the Bible says in Hebrews 4, it says, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all ways he was tempted like we are. And then it says this, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may receive access, you know, by faith. In our time of need, come boldly to the throne of grace that you can receive help. In your time of need. So we need to be people that, I mean, we're, we're realizing, God, you're here for me. And I'm going to run to you. So, question. I know you have a relationship with God. How's your fellowship with the Holy Spirit going? How's that going? You see, all of a sudden now, you're wanting to witness to people and tell them about the Lord. And it's really motivated by I want people to know God because, see, he has so changed my life. I just want other people to know God can change their life. It's not like this thing, well, I need to do this and I need to do that. It's like, yes, I need to do it because the Scripture tells me to do it, but it's also this sincere desire you want to help people out. You want people to know the Lord. So, How's your fellowship with the Lord going? So number one, realize God's with you all the time, 24-7, 365. Eliminate from your relationship stuff like, well, I don't know that God heard my prayer. The Bible says God knows what you're going to say before you ever say it. Have you ever prayed? Sometimes I prayed about things and it was like the Lord said, don't even think about it. Don't even ask me. You know, there was a time in the Old Testament, Moses got, he said, I, I, I he kind of was thinking, Lord, I really do want to go into that promised land. And he kind of waffled back and forth. I know you said I wasn't, I wasn't to go into the promised land. He said, but Lord, and he started to ask God. And as soon as he started to pray, the Lord stopped Moses and said, Moses, don't ask me about this matter anymore. Now, what does that mean? God knows what you're thinking before you ever articulate it out of your mouth. So what you need to do is, we need to just have this open fellowship with the Lord. Okay, so just recently I was studying, reading my Bible. And um, as I'm worshiping the Lord and studying and reading, I mean, God's presence is just so real to me. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Lord, this is so amazing. Just the presence of God. And I said, Lord, you know, and I read that scripture in Psalm 84 where it says, you know, I'd, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be in your presence than anywhere. I was reading that and I was just worshiping the Lord. And here's what the Lord put in my heart. He said, Tom, you know, just like in the natural, things are conceived during times of intimacy. Things are conceived in your spirit when you have this close fellowship with me. In other words, whenever you spend time in my presence, there is, there, it gives birth to things. It, things are birthed in this time of just fellowshipping with me. And have you ever noticed sometimes you're praying, you're just fellowshipping with the Lord, and you're not even really praying about all these fringe things, but it's while you're spending time with the Lord, and as you seek first the kingdom, all of these other things start being added unto you. So if you're going to have time, a fellowship with the Lord, just remember he's always there. 
guys, did you know he's with you even when you're doing home improvement projects? <laughs> oh, I don't include my God in these kind of things. I just put all that. I just do it. Well, to, I want to tell you in the Old Testament, you know, there was a guy named Bezalel, and the Bible said, you know, he was skillful because God was on him. He was a builder because God was on him. Build the Ark of the Covenant because God was on him. You know, God's first man that's anointed in Scripture was a carpenter, a builder. And so God can help us to do practical things, natural things. And we need to just welcome him, Lord, I'm an accountant. Thank you for giving me wisdom as an accountant. I mean, you know, God has a book of numbers. He kept detailed records of everything. And so God will help us wherever we're at. But then it's not enough. I'm talking about moving from relationship into fellowship. It's not enough just to be conscious of his presence that is with you and talk like that and act like that. But the second thing you've got to do is you're going to have to spend time cultivating that relationship. You know what the difference between having a relationship with a person and fellowship with a person is? The difference between a relationship and fellowship is time spent. In other words, there's sometimes people have a relationship with someone. For example, I've got a cousin. We're, we're related. Or I've got an uncle or I've got an aunt or I've got an extended family somewhere and we have some type of a relationship. But you know what distinguishes a relationship from fellowship is do you ever spend time with them? Do you ever talk to them? Do you ever, you know, communicate with them? And the only way you're going to really press into a greater level of fellowship is, is that you're going to have to just enjoy spending time with God. And can I tell you, you're living in a world that is constantly trying to hijack your time. Last night when Jay was ministering to the youth, he said, now I know you can read the Bible any number of ways. I realize you can read it on a tablet, you can read it on your phone, you can read it through some electronic device. But he said, I'm encouraging you to pull out a Bible and read it, particularly as teenagers, to read a book. And here's the reason why. If you get on the tablet or if you get on the phone, have you ever started with good intentions to read the Bible and then all of a sudden an email came in? You started with good intentions to, you know, read the Bible on an electronic device, and then all of a sudden some alert or some, something went on in Washington, D.C. You, you know, you got, these are my descriptions. His were a little different. But, you know, I've had it happen. Now, my point is this. The enemy is working right now trying to prohibit you from spending time with God. Now, y'all, he doesn't want you to have a relationship with God, but you've got that. So you know what he doesn't want now? I don't want you to have fellowship with the Lord because, see, when you have that close fellowship with the Lord, you're really a threat to the devil's kingdom, and here's the reason why all of a sudden you're doing the works of Jesus on the earth today. So you need to spend time with God, alone with God. Okay, I'm just going to be ask the men in here. Have you ever had a date night plan with your wife? We're going to go out to dinner, and it didn't work out so hot. How many of you have ever been there? You went there, and then all of a sudden, you got distracted. Somebody you knew come up and started talking to you, or maybe you were on your phone, or maybe you know you got distracted by this or you got distracted by that in other words your intention was hey let's spend let's talk a little bit kind of get up to speed and then you got distracted by all these other things y'all that happens not only in relationships with people that happens in relationship with our god you know what the best button on your tv is <laughs> that was good It is. The blind leading the blind. That's what it is. You know, I visited over at Don Robertson's house. Don, I'm glad you're back this morning. Don had the flu, and but he's back. Hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, 
You know, as I recall Don's story, Don sold everything he had and said, well, I think, as I, I may get this a little off, Don, but this is how I understood it. Sold everything he had. He's in his late 80s and said, I want to move into a retirement center. Well, he lived in that retirement center for a little while, and he thought, this, this isn't for me. I need to get out of here. <laughs> so he left, and he found a home here in Yukon, and it was one that he bought it and fixed it up. And so, but the only problem was he sold everything he had. You know, in other words, you got rid of everything, and I, now I'm starting over, and I, I don't have anything. And so I went over and visited him one time, and I said, Don, I said, he said, oh, I don't have a TV. Now, y'all, we have a TV. I'm not anti-TV. But what I'm saying is, he goes, he goes, but I got this radio here. And he was just saying, you know, I got this radio here. And, that, and I listen to Christian radio on here. I can get the news at a certain time. I'll listen to the news and weather and turn it off. And, you know, when he said that, I left there. And there's a lot about that visit I don't remember. But I remember that made an impact on my life. And I thought, how many homes in America, there'd be more peace if we had less clutter, white noise, less junk running through the air that's really clutter. Amen. Oh, I know you say, Pastor, you're meddling now. Well, I'm just saying, you know, here's how it works. Here's how it works. People say, oh, Pastor, I, I want to grow in God. And then you say, well, you know, here's a few ways you can grow in God. Well, Pastor, I didn't know I was going to have to, you know, I didn't know it was going to affect my life any. Y'all, here's what I'm saying, and I mean this from a, here's what I'm positive of. Let me say it this way. If God initiates change in your life, I promise you it'll be changed for the better. Does that make sense? You won't look at it with remorse. You'll look at it going, oh, thank God. I made that change. Okay, so here we are. So if you're going to have fellowship with the Lord, we're moving from relationship to fellowship. Number one, you're going to have to be that person that says, okay, I'm just going to live every day. God is with me wherever I go, whatever I do. I'm always talking about God is in me. You know, he's living in me. He's the greater one. Live big in me, Lord. I mean, that's a good prayer to pray. And then secondly, Lord, I just want to spend plenty of time with you. Now, everybody here, Everybody here needs to have time in your schedule every day where it's your time one-on-one -on -one with God. Well, you say, Pastor, I've got a busy schedule. I've got a busy schedule. Well, you know, we had a president a couple of administrations ago, served two terms, and as busy as his schedule was, he said, I still make a schedule in my schedule every day. I spend time reading the Bible. Well, I doubt there's anybody in this room who's got a busier schedule than the President of the United States of America, but it was a priority. It was something that it was important to him. You study about uh, Abraham Lincoln. There was a season in his life, every day he got up early, and he, he had an appointment, a standing appointment. Somebody asked him, oh, well, I want to get my first appointment with the President. And somebody said, well, his first appointment is at a certain time. He has a standing appointment every day. Lincoln did, and they said, well, who's that with? He says he has an appointment with God every day that he keeps. Now, I want to say something. We need to be people that prioritize our relationship with the Lord. And, you know, that's going to look different for different people. I have a spot that I enjoy. But you know what? You need to, maybe it's drive time for you. It's commute time. But there has to be a place where you're feeding your spirit, you're refreshing your spirit, you're renewing your mind, you're just spending time fellowshipping with the Lord. And if you'll do that, I promise you, whatever sacrifice you make, the benefits will be greater than any sacrifices you make, okay? Now, I'm going to shift over here and talk about what are the benefits of having fellowship with God. Here's the number one benefit of you having fellowship with God on a regular basis. You have peace that passes all understanding. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I wish I could tell you this week nothing's going to happen that's not on your radar. 
But I'm going to just flat tell you, something's going to happen that's not on your radar this week. There's going to be something happen that you can go, well, I wasn't expecting that. Y'all, if we only have peace like the world has peace, the world's peace says this, if everything's peaceful, I have peace. But you see, we have a peace that passes all understanding. Things aren't peaceful. Things are chaotic, as a matter of fact. But I know that I know that I know that I've heard from the Lord and God's going to finish what he has started in this situation. So what is the advantage of you spending time with God? Instead of frantically going through life, you can peacefully go through life. You can just know, hey, I, I have peace that passes all understanding. And it's worth it. And it's not only peace, but people that have peace, I've discovered this, they also have joy. You remember what Jesus said in John 16? He said, the world that I, the peace that I have, Jesus said, the peace that I have, the world didn't give it to you. The world, no man will take my joy from you. That's what Jesus said. And so we have a, a joy that's independent of circumstances the apostle paul wrote from a prison cell rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice now i'm going to tell you something your fruitful times can be difficult times paul was in prison he was there oftentimes you know without proper due process we call it i mean he was thrown into situations but you know, in the midst of all that, instead of being bitter and angry, he would praise God. He was being fruitful during that season of his life. Why did he do that? Because he had fellowship with God. He not only taught this to the Corinthians, that they would know the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God, but they would have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Every day we live, we need to live in fellowship with God. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Your spirit loves being in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's like heaven on earth. It's like, oh yeah, this is, this is wonderful. I'm able to have peace that passes all understanding. And, and so just stay, stay renewed, stay refreshed. How many of you charge, if you have a cell phone, a mobile phone, how many of you charge your phone most of you every day, right? You charge your phone up, right? And then, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I forgot to charge my phone. It's 10 o'clock and I'm already at like 16%. It's 10 a.m. in the morning and I'm already at 16 Well, people say, oh, this isn't going to work. You know, if you have enough sense to charge your cell phone, how many know we should have enough sense to know we need to charge our spirit life up and just stay refreshed? Oh, I got to mow the yard. Did you know God, he's with you when you mow the yard? Some of you should say, praise God, I get to mow the yard. Can't talk on the phone and mow. Can't email people and mow. I mean, you know, you can just be out there and you just have that time with God. You know, you can turn tasks and things that you do, you can look at it as a negative or you can say, you know what, this is just an opportunity to spend time with God. Oh, i got to fold these clothes. Well, you get to fellowship with God. You say, Pastor, now you're really meddling right there, you know. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're moving to what are the benefits of you fellowship with the Lord. There's joy in your life. There's peace in your life. And then here's this. There's a supernatural compassion that is imparted into your life for other people when you've been in the presence of God Almighty. Instead of looking at people with this critical way, you look at people in a different way. You know, I shared on a Wednesday night a couple of weeks ago, I felt the Lord lead me that day, share your story. And so I did a message called My Cancer Story. And I shared how that when I was first going through chemotherapy, I just thought, I'm going to stay active. I'm going to walk every day. Of course, it was winter months. And so I would get out, and I would put on warm clothes, and I'd walk through our neighborhood. And, um, you know, when you first start on that journey, you walk around, and you 
Maybe you see a yard that's not real tidy. Maybe they didn't keep up the yard, or maybe they, you saw certain things. And, you know, you first start walking out, and you're like, look at them like, well, I wonder why they don't just pick up the place. You walk around, I wonder why they still got their trash cans out. Now, I know y'all have never done this, okay. But anyway, so I walk, I, and, I, you know, you kind of, you know, you just walk around with that. But here's what happens after about three months of going through chemotherapy. You walk through that same neighborhood, and when you go by that house, you go, Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus you'd bless them. And if they're dealing with anything in their life that's tough or anything has messed their schedule up, I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would just reach out and help them. Amen. You know, y'all, there's plenty of skeptics in this world, but there's not a lot of people that are going to walk in God's love. And you know what disarms people is whenever you have people that are in fellowship with God. Because see, when you're in fellowship with God, you're in fellowship with love. And when you're in fellowship with God, you know it, you do turn the other cheek. And you respond in an opposite spirit. And you're not overcome with evil, but you overcome evil with good. And you do not take into account all the evil that's been done unto you. You pay no attention to a suffered wrong. Now, I know some of you think I'm quoting the, I'm quoting the Bible. <laughs> By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one toward another. Amen. Now, you're never going to walk in agape love when you're not fellowshipping with the Lord through His Word and by His Spirit as you should be. Amen. The only way you're going to be able to walk in agape love, the only way that you're going to respond in an opposite spirit is if you've been in correct fellowship with the Lord through His Word, by His Spirit. Now let me emphasize that. When you say fellowship, what does that look like? Y'all, fellowship with God is not all prayer time there has to be a balance where you're spending adequate time in the Word of God. Why do I say that? Because see, this Word right here, heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God's never going to change. The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank God we have His Word, and just keep your mind renewed to the Word of God. Now, I've said this so often. If you're doing your devotions the right way, it's not draining you, but it's building you up. Oh, I've got my devotion time. I was mean when I went in, and I was meaner when I came out. <laughs> Y'all, that's not what God had in mind. And how many know you're not the devotion police? Can I get a good amen? Now, as a parent, sure, you need to encourage your kids. Are you spending time with the Word? Are you spending time in the Word? Y'all, if it's okay to ask them if they brush their teeth, how many know it's okay to ask them if they've been in the Word, right? So, you know, just as a parent, hey, you, how, how, you been in the Word? You in the Word every day? So, we need to be people that enjoy fellowship with the Lord. I, you know, you say, Pastor, what did God put in your heart for the day? It was that about fellowship with the Lord. And so the Lord just put it in my heart several weeks, you know, it was probably six, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago now. You need to enjoy me, Tom. And I'll tell you, that one word changed my life. And you know what? I get up every day, and you say, what's your number one thing you need to do? I got responsibilities just like you have responsibilities. I have deadlines. I have things I've got to get put together. But you know what my number one call is? I'm going to get up, and I'm going to enjoy my relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, Pastor, when I get to heaven, I'm going to enjoy God. Well, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get a jump start on it. Because I'm not going to be more saved when I get in heaven than I am right now. I'm not going to be more righteous over there than I am right now. I'm in right standing with God now, and I'm going to enjoy my relationship with the Lord in heaven. So, are you spending time with God? So, oh, Pastor, I got all these other, all these other family members need my help. I'm going to promise you the best thing you can do for your family members is spend time with God. Okay, I'm going to give you another revelation. The best thing you can do for your marriage is spend time with God. 
You know why you say, oh, it's hard for me to be the husband I should be? Yeah, you're, you're, you're pulling out of a dry well. Best thing you can do as a parent, spend time with God. Best thing you can do as an employee, spend time with God. You know, we have a lot of empty people that are trying to help others. As we spend adequate time with God, guess what? It just has a way of raising everybody else up. Such as I have, give I thee. Okay, so question today is this, and I'm going to go to 23rd Psalm, and then we're going to wrap up here. Psalm 23, we read it last week. It's really a, a declaration that David prayed. We call it prayer, but these six verses are really more of a proclamation. And one of the things David said in the 23rd Psalm is verse number 5. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Notice this, my cup overflows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. There's a table, a fellowship table. And then it goes on to say, you anoint my head with oil. Notice this last portion here, my cup overflows. Did you know God wants us to be in fellowship at his table to where we live every day where we're overflowing with his presence? Correct? We're overflowing. Now, you say, Pastor, do you ever see examples of this? I told you all, if you were here last Sunday morning, I told you about my Friday night excursion to buy coffee at Walmart. And while I'm there, it was like this fight was about to break out. And there was one lady that had these kids, and there was another lady, and they were yelling at each other, and they were going back and forth. And then the other lady walked over from the frozen aisle, and she was over in the produce, but they were still yelling at each other over the aisle. And, man, it was escalating. And I told you, Pastor Tom, I just felt like I needed to go investigate this situation, you know. And I, I went back there, and, and, boy, they were mad. And then the police officer, he came up. And I, I was interested. I thought, now, how's a cop going to handle this? And he said, hey, you know, y'all, we can't have this. Y'all got to get, you got to go. You got to go. And she says, well, I got to check out. And then the other one went down to check out at another area. And they're still yelling. And this girl, lady that's right by me, I mean, she's still just, I mean, she's, I'll be out there. I'll meet you in the parking lot. I'm going, man, this could be interesting, you know. <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? Anyway, so I thought, man, this is. So anyway, so they're going back and forth, and she's still yelling. Well, I'm getting my groceries, and she's right behind me. And she's still yelling. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm honest to God thinking, she just needs the love of God. You know, all strife, that stuff will wear you out. Did you know being mad just flat wear you out like that? She was just mad. And, of course, I was thinking, now, Lord, I was thinking, do I just go over and hug her? That's what I was honestly thinking. And then I thought, no, she might stab me. No, I, I, I didn't think that. But anyway, so I was sitting there, and I thought, you know, do I just hug her? I thought, I think I'll just hug her. And she was just, whoo, she was cranked up. I mean, she was going at it. Now, I'm not 100% in these areas, and I, I know really none of us are 100%, but there are seasons of our life where we're at 100%. And I tell you, in that moment, I was thinking, you know, when I see somebody living like that, you just want to say, you know, there's a better way to live. You don't have to be angry with everybody. You can walk in agape love. And so anyway, when I left there, I thought to myself, Lord, maybe there's, you know, I th honestly, I thought, that would have to be one of the benefits of fellowship with the Lord and just constantly staying in fellowship with God is that when you see people, you're able to respond in that given situation the way Jesus would respond. Hey, we are his ambassadors, correct? And so anyway, I would just say that, you know, when you fellowship with the Lord, there's just this love that comes out of your life and you're able to help people, and you're able to be a blessing. All right, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord, I know that in this room there are people that have a relationship with you, but Lord, I pray that you would transition them to where they have greater fellowship with you, Lord. Fellowship with your word, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And Father, they just realize every day their job, I shouldn't say a job, their role is just to enjoy God, to enjoy the word, to enjoy your spirit, to love people. And Lord, as we do that, we're living a life where our cup overflows. And we're able to be a blessing to other people. And we're able to minister to other people. And Father, I just thank you today that your love never runs out on us, Lord. That God, you believe in us, you care for us. And Lord, I just pray for people that are in this room today, Lord. I pray that they would truly, truly, truly enjoy fellowship with God more than they ever have at any time in their life. And Lord, we just thank you today. And Lord, we thank you that you're not dry. You're not boring to be with. But Lord, you are truly the most satisfying relationship we'll ever experience and encounter in life lord we thank you today now there's not a person here today that couldn't grow in this area there's not a person here today that couldn't transition from relationship into greater fellowship so i'm going to ask everybody just lift up both hands this morning i want everybody to lift up both hands and just say thank you lord for moving me into greater fellowship with you, your son, and your spirit. Come on, let's just praise him. Father, move us all to greater place, Lord. Lord, we want to move away from religious ideology, and we want to move deeper into a relationship with the living God. Lord, we thank you today that you are everything that people are looking for in this world. They're looking for it in the person of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you today. I bless you. Come on, just praise him today. The Lord's smiling on you today. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants you to spend time. And you say, Pastor, I'm broken at this season in my life. Good news is broken hearts are open hearts. And that you can hear from the Lord and He can talk to you and He can invade that situation. Would you stand to your feet today? Come on, I'm going to ask you right now. Let's just worship Him. Let's glorify Him.